Hello friends, in the previous video, we discussed about DNA polymerase in prokaryotes. We discussed about its general features. You can refer my video, the link is given in the description box. In this video, we are going to discuss about types of DNA polymerase in prokaryotes. So first, what are DNA polymerase or the definition of DNA polymerase? So we have already discussed that group of enzymes that catalyze the synthesis of DNA strands on template strand during DNA replication are known as DNA polymerase. They are also called as DNA replicase. It always moves along with parental stand that is in the 3 dash to 5 dash direction and forms daughter strand in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. This also we discussed in detail with the help of diagram in the previous video. You can refer it. Now the types of polymerases in prokaryotes. There are five types of polymerases. First is DNA polymerase 1. These were first discovered and it was discovered by Arthur Kornberg in 1958. It consists of single polypeptide chain. It is known as metalloenzymes as one atom of zinc is present per chain. It is most abundant. Greater than 95% of polymerase activity in E. coli is of DNA polymerase 1. These has poor processivity rate. These add 15 to 20 nucleotides per second. Now the activities of DNA polymerase 1. These have both polymerase as well as exonuclease activity. First is 5 dash 3 dash polymerase activity for the new strand synthesis. This synthesizes the new strand that is complementary to the template strand. 3 dash 5 dash exonuclease activity that is removal of mismatched nucleotide or in NIC translation. This also we have discussed in detail in previous video. Then 5 dash 3 dash exonuclease activity by which there is deletion of RNA primers from 5 dash end of complementary DNA strand. Hence, these are involved in the processing of Okazaki fragments and gap filling. Let us understand this with the help of the diagram. This is the leading strand, this is the lagging strand. So DNA polymerase 1 removes the primer from the leading strand and as well as the lagging strand by the 5 dash 3 dash exonuclease activity lagging strand is in the form of the Okazaki fragment. When the primer is removed then there is gap between the Okazaki fragments and DNA polymerase also helps in the filling of these gap. Now the structure of DNA polymerase these resembles the right hand of human. And these has three regions or domains. First is palm region, which consists of beta pleated sheet. These are the catalytic active site. DNA binds to this palm region. And its primary function is processing the addition of deoxynucleotide triphosphate. Second is finger region or finger domain. Primary function is to bind the nucleotide triphosphate with the template base. Third is thumb region or thumb domain. It binds the recently synthesized DNA and maintains the correct position of primer and active site. Hence, plays a potential role in the processivity, translocation and positioning of DNA. This is the structure of DNA polymerase 1. This is thumb region, finger region of finger domain and palm region of palm domain. This is the template strand and this is the primer with 3 dash OH end. This is the incoming nucleotide. This template binds to the palm region of DNA polymerase 1. Second is DNA polymerase 2. It was discovered by Thomas Kornberg in 1970. It is made up of single polypeptide chain that consists of seven subunits. It is known as the backup enzyme of polymerase 3. Activities, it shows 5 dash 3 dash polymerase activity. That is, it adds nucleotide bases for the new strand synthesis. 
it is less efficient than polymerase 1. It also shows 3-5- exonuclease activity that is removal of mismatch bases or nick translation. So during SOS induction that is when there is mismatch bases present or there is nick. Its cell presence jump from approximately 30 to 50 copies per cell to approximately 200 to 300 copies per cell because their activity increases or these are involved in the 3-5- exonuclease activity structure. The structure is quite unknown. Now the third type of DNA polymerase is DNA polymerase 3. It is primary holoenzyme. Holoenzyme is completely functional enzyme which consists of both enzyme and coenzyme. Its main function is DNA replication. Hence it is known as the major replicative polymerase for both leading and lagging strand. It consists of two polypeptide chains and has 10 subunits. Now the activities of DNA polymerase 3 enzyme 5-3- polymerase activity. That is addition of nucleotide bases for the synthesis of a new DNA strand. So it helps in the synthesis of the new DNA strand which is complementary to the template strand. 3-5- exonuclease activity. That is deletion of mismatched nucleotide bases or helps in NIC translation. This we have already discussed in detail in previous video. You can refer it. Now let us see the structure of DNA polymerase 3 enzyme. It consists of 10 subunits which we discussed earlier. First is alpha subunit. It helps in DNA synthesis. Hence it is known as the polymerase activity hub. Second is epsilon subunit which helps in the 3-5- proofreading activity. Third is theta subunit. It acts as an accessory protein and it also participates in proofreading mechanism. Then tau subunit, it promotes dimerization of the core protein complex. Gamma subunit, then delta subunit, it is exonucleolytic proofreader. Then delta dash subunit, then xi subunit, then psi subunit and at last is beta subunit. It acts as a clamp protein that holds DNA molecules and is responsible for processivity factor. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about DNA polymerase 3 structure, it is made up of clamp loading complex, beta sliding clamp and third is polymerase 3 core. So let us see them one by one. First is clamp loading complex. It is made up of gamma, delta, delta dash, xi and psi subunit. All acts as a clamp loading complex and helps beta clamp to bind with DNA. Second is beta sliding clamp. It is present as duplicate or dimer. Dimer of beta subunit forms a ring shaped structure. It is involved in the processing of both leading and lagging strands. Third is polymerase 3 core or core domain. There are two core domains. Each of them are made up of alpha, epsilon and theta subunits. These are also known as catalytic core of DNA polymerase 3. It contains polymerase activity and 3-5- exonuclease activity. So this is the structure of DNA polymerase 3. This is core domain which consists of alpha, epsilon and theta subunit. This is beta clamp which consists of dimer of beta subunit. This is clamp loading complex which consists of gamma, delta, delta dash, psi and xi subunit. In addition to these three parts, tau subunit is also present. It is present as dimer. It is known as dimerization component. It causes two core polymerase molecules to link together at the fork or the replication fork so that both leading and the lagging strand is synthesized or processing of both leading and lagging strand takes place. Now the next is DNA polymerase 4. It is part of Y family of DNA polymerase. 
It has no 3-5- exonuclease activity or in other words proof reading activity. Hence it is error prone DNA polymerase. It is expressed by DIN B gene. This gene is switched on via SOS induction when DNA polymerase 3 is stalled at replication fork and the production of polymerase 4 rises tenfold. Now the function of DNA polymerase 4. It interferes with the polymerase 3 processivity. A checkpoint is created hence replication stops and provides time for DNA lesions to repair. Another function is translesion synthesis at stalled replication fork or TLS. This we have already discussed in previous video on general features of DNA polymerase. You can refer it. The link is given in the description box. Now the DNA polymerase 5, it is also part of Y family of DNA polymerase. Like DNA polymerase 4, it has no 3-5- exonuclease activity, hence it is also error prone. It can use translation synthesis on lesions that block replication or miscoding lesions which modify bases and lead to wrong base pairing. It is highly mutagenic, hence it is used as a last resort in DNA repair mechanisms. This is all for today's video. In the next video, we will discuss about DNA polymerase in eukaryotes. So stay tuned. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.